Hi, this is Karen Green. I'm a member of North Star Clubhouse here in Portland, and today I'm talking to Anne Verdine. Hi, Anne. Hi. How long have you been a member of North Star? Since late 2013, so it's been, wow, going on three years now. And what brought you here? My vocational rehabilitation counselor at the time, actually, I have dealt with depression for about five, uh, not five years, 12 years now. I was diagnosed in 2004, and here we were in 2013, and between then and then, I had wanted to get my life together, wanted to get a job, make something out of myself. First of all, I am totally blind and have been that way since birth, so it's always kind of, in that regard, it's kind of hard to get a job, but add to that mental illness and depression, and you got someone who is like extra hard to place. And that's what my vocational rehabilitation counselor was facing. She saw a person that wanted to work, but you name the place, she called it. She may not have called every place in the world, but she called a lot of places is the bottom line. And no one wanted someone with my combination of skills, but yet issues. You know, I wasn't cognitively disabled officially. You know, I didn't have a diagnosis of a developmental disability, so I didn't qualify for any of the special needs work program type things. But I wasn't happy just sitting home not doing anything. And, of course, the money was part of it, too. You know, the classic so much to buy and so little to spend kind of deal. Well, finally, my voc rehab counselor came across North Star and said, maybe we can at least get you plugged into this place. They won't pay you, but they'll help you work on your skills. They'll help you. At least it'll be a volunteer kind of opportunity. We can build a voc rehab plan around that in hopes that one of these days it could lead to employment. So she and I came in on a Friday afternoon, and a member who was so... The way she presented herself and the clubhouse... I thought she was a staff at first, (laughs) but she gave us a kind of an individual orientation and we really, we figured out even then that North Star needed me because as soon as I told them that I was the secretary of a chapter of an organization for blind people and took minutes, I also took minutes for a committee at my church and they're like, you sit in meetings and take minutes. We need that so bad. (laughs) And... Within a matter of weeks, I was taking minutes for the weekly meetings that we were having, the me- the policy meetings that we had every week. So those were your first impressions when you came in? Yeah, that someone with my skills was needed. And, and like I said, as I got started with the minutes, I mean, I definitely was committed. And did that lead to any other opportunities? Well, I don't know that the minutes themselves did, but I kept coming to North Star and even using my skills on the computer to help North Star. And then eventually, after being involved for like a year to a year and a half, I just happened to be at North Star when I got an email from North Star (laughs) talking about a job working for the Salvation Army. One of these people that stand in front of the stores and ring the bell and people pass by and put the money in. Well. This email said, talk to, and it pointed out two staff members. And I was like, well, I'm right here. Let me see if they're available. (laughs) Because I thought, okay, standing in front of a store and ringing a bell, that's easy enough. I could do that. I, So I talked to them about it, and they believed that I could do it too. And they helped me get set up with that. And from Black Friday to Christmas Eve that year, I did bell ringing for the Salvation Army. After Christmas, that job was over. And I still wanted and needed to get a job, so I continued to do volunteer work with North Star. What was North Star like when you first got here? We did not have a transitional employment program or a employment specialist at that time. And that was actually kind of disappointing because my voc rehab counselor had mentioned that there was, because she had seen that on on, on the website, It turned out that was really more of a work in progress. So based on what was there, you know, we built my voc rehab plan based on what was there, which was kind of volunteer opportunities, just getting out of the house and doing something that made a difference in some, even on some small level. 
we eventually got the employment specialist. And as I said, he and another staff member helped me get the job at the Salvation Army. I ended up, after working again on a volunteer basis with North Star for about four months, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And that right place at the right time was a community meeting here at North Star, where the director announced, we've been contacted by a facility that takes care of people with special needs, and they need night staff. Here's what some of the duties would be, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, I was in a situation where anything that starts, we've heard from a place that is hiring people, grabs my attention. Most of the time, I would go on to hear about things that I couldn't do that needed to be done, and I would rule out that job in my mind. But in this case, I wasn't quite ready to rule it out. I didn't know that I could do it, but I wasn't ready to rule it out. So I went back to the employment specialist the next week, and I said, is there something you think I could do? And he said, well, I don't know. Let me check into it. So he talked to the talked to the executive director, and obviously, in talking to her, he figured that I was the perfect fit because the next thing that happens is I get a call from him saying, so that job where you took care of people with special needs, is that something that you'd like to do? And I'm going, well, wait a minute. Convince me I can do it first. <laughs> <laughs> And so I ended up having a first interview with the executive director. She was impressed. And the next day there was a second interview. And by the end of the second interview, she had hired me. And that was, I thought that was amazing. (laughs) Is that where you're working now? Actually, it is. I have a different position than the one I applied for, but that is where I'm working now. I went from caregiver to assistant to the executive director. I probably could have stayed a caregiver if it wasn't for the fact that these particular clients had episodes of illness in their sleep that could happen and be over with or could happen and they could be well into being sick before they made any kind of noise or those episodes of illness to which it was my job to respond would either come or go or get started too silently for me to intercept it. Being blind, it was just something I couldn't respond to well enough. But on every other level, I was everything my boss needed. Committed to my work on time, dedicated, good work ethic, cared about my clients. So based on that and the fact that I wrote very detailed logs of my shifts and I'm detail-oriented, et cetera, et cetera, she thought, I need a personal assistant too, and Anne would be perfect for that. And so, yeah, I've been doing that since September, and now it's June, so. You like it. Yeah. So this is a good placement for you. Yeah, and really, truly, I owe a lot of it to North Star because I wanted and needed a job, and Volk Rehab was coming up empty. Well, my counselor at the time saw someone who she just couldn't place the employment specialist saw a person that would be a good worker if we could just find her the right job. And he stuck with me until we did. And the current employment specialist would do the same thing for anyone else. That would be Aaron. Yes. We've had a change in employment specialists, but Aaron will do exactly what our former one did. She and North Star in general would help you develop your skills and when you've established, this is what I'm good at, and I'm ready to find a job, she'll help you find one. When did you find out that you experienced depression? I was only diagnosed in 2004, but who knows how long I'd had it before that. Unfortunately, I faced a loss at 11 that no child should have to face, and that's the loss of my mother. And if people had recognized maybe that I was so emotional, for example, more emotional than they thought I should be because I had a problem rather than constantly trying to not make me so emotional with their words, maybe things could have turned out differently. What kind of things did people say to you? Oh, like, like I said, unfortunately, at 11, I lost my single mother to diabetes and was placed in the custody of well-meaning but very conservative and not really understanding where I was coming from, I guess, guardians. And I never felt like anything that... I, I, it, I never seemed to feel like anything that I did or enjoyed was right anyway. So being emotional was just another thing, but things like you know, you can't be so sensitive or... Unless someone had died or something, crying was pretty looked down on, it seemed. I was not encouraged to cry as a child. 
I got to hear, I'll give you something to really cry about <laughs> yeah. a lot of times. I, I, I'm a parent. I don't understand to saying that to someone at all. But uh, so I hear you. Yeah. Um, I guess my message about mental illness, especially to parents, would be I'm not a doctor. I'm not a child psychiatrist or a child psychologist. I don't know how you differentiate between a rebellious child and a child with a mental illness. But if you suspect that there might be a problem, even if it's just in the back of your mind and with all your heart, you don't want to believe it. This is just a kid. I'll get, I'll break him of this. Please, please, for the sake of the child that in your heart, I know you love, don't shove that thought out of your mind. Reach out to someone, see if there's any, if there's anything that you can do to Explore the possibility that your child might have some kind of mental illness. I mean, maybe they don't. I find myself coming to tears even as I think about it, but maybe they're not mentally ill. But if they are, for their own sake, you know, don't make them suffer and feel lousy about themselves. If they need help, get it for them. If you had to rush your child to the emergency room, and the doctor said, well, it's a, it's a condition that there's no cure for, and it's pretty, it's pretty life-changing. It's something that you do have to take into consideration, but with medication and, and or physical therapy, you know, they can have a good life. You wouldn't tell that doctor, I don't want my kid medicated. I don't, I'm not going to comply with your orders, you know. You wouldn't say that if it was a physical condition, would you? I know there's a lot of stigma around mental illness. I know a lot of people think of mental illness as maybe just a figment of people's imagination or an excuse to misbehave or whatever you might think, but really, it's it's no different. Mental illness can be just as deadly. The diagnosis finally happened when I was borderline suicidal, and I had just enough sanity left to go into the hospital before I snapped. In other words, mental illness can be just as deadly as other illnesses that can be treated with medication and lived with and even, if not cured, at least kept at bay so that people can have a decent life. Do you have any messages for people who experience depression? Well, even though it may not seem like it, there can be life even on the other side of this, I wish I could say contact your local clubhouse. <laughs> if you are blessed enough to live in a place that has one, if you're local to Portland, Oregon, we do have North Star. If you are blessed enough to have a clubhouse in your area, I would say connect with them. They'll help you in your recovery. And if the unfortunate fact is that you don't, just you know keep your therapy appointments, take your meds, try to surround yourself with people that would support you with friends, with family that actually understand where you're coming from. I mean, I've got family, but they don't always understand the people that I lived with and under whose influence I lived for a total of, what, 21 years are family. But I deliberately put distance between us because going back and living with them would do nothing but derail me, undo any progress that we would have made. So I guess... Just surround yourself with people that will help you. And if there's someone in your life that won't, just limit your time with them as much as possible. Do you have any last words? Well, thank you, North Star, for helping me get employed. I really do feel that I owe the fact that I have a job right now to North Star. And I just hope that others will find themselves where I am. On the other side of recovery, I... I I don't know that my recovery is quote over unquote, but I've gone a long way from where I was and I've got a lot that I can contribute to that, but North Star was definitely a part of it. To anyone who's looking at North Star and thinking they might want to join, do you have any thoughts for them? Come by. Come by and especially we have our orientations Thursday at two. It's every Thursday at two and you know, come to an orientation, see what we're about, and 
If you decide you want to become a member, we'll meet you where you are. Don't think that you can only come if you're ready to go to work. If all you want to do is come in and just have some time where you're not stuck in your house, you've got a chance to get out of the house and just hang out with people. If that's where you want to start, we're happy that you're here. If that's where you are for a good while, we're still happy that you're here. If you would like to come, we'd love to have you in whatever capacity you might want to come to us. Even if you get to the point where you're ready to work and or if there's gaps in your work schedule and you don't have to work that day and you want to come do some stuff in the clubhouse, welcome. Well, thank you very much, Anne. Thank you for asking me to come talk for a while. If you like this video and want to support Northstar, please go to northstarclubhouse.org and click Donate.